When it comes to the Alga Olympics, teams like the Azure Royals, Icers, and of course the Fireballs immediately come to mind. Duel number seven, however, puts the spotlight on two other teams, one of which has not yet tapped into its full potential and has flown under the radar since their very first performance. The other, being a rookie team, finds themselves in a quite interesting position. As the preseason tournament gets closer, which of these two marbles will reign supreme today? This is Professor CC19, and welcome to the 2019 Alga Olympics preseason duels number 7, Wisteria versus Sequoia. And as always, I'm going to hit the play button and allow the marbles to get mixed around on the starting gates while I talk about today's competitors, who, for the first time in a duel, are both back marbles for their corresponding teams. We're going to start with Wisteria. Wisteria is the back marble for the Ultraviolets, a veteran team that finished in 13th in last year's games, which is not all that good. That is, in the bottom half, towards the bottom quarter of competitors. They finished with a final score of 84 points, which was a tie for 13th with Team Neon. They only got one position higher because they got a silver medal compared to Team Neon's bronze. So, I said in the intro that the Ultraviolets have potential that they have not yet begun to tap into. And the reason I say that is because if you take a look at their 2018 performances, you will see that they were never really bad. They were never in the top, uh, they, pardon me, they were never in the bottom two, like we've seen with some of our other teams. However, they were always mediocre to poor. They were consistent in their range on the leaderboard, but they were never better than just okay. Mediocre performances slightly into the top half was pretty good for the Ultraviolets in 2018. They only got into the top half, I believe, three times over the course of the 2018 games, with their highlight being where they got silver in event number 10, Collision, a performance that actually kept them alive to win the 2018 games going into event number 11. They only lost the gold medal to our eventual champions, the Fireballs. So, there is definitely potential in the Ultraviolets. Wisteria may be the back marble, definitely not the weakest member of the team, though. Their consistency makes me wonder if they can get their performances a little bit higher on the leaderboard, and if they do, if they could possibly be a factor in the 2019 games if they should qualify. If they can get their results up to the point where they're in the top half a majority of the time, they could be in it to win it, or at least be contenders in the 2019 main games. So that is Wisteria, that is the Ultraviolets, flown under the radar, but they do have untapped potential. And on the other hand, we have Sequoia. Sequoia is the back marble for one of the new teams, the Foresters. And the Foresters really are in an interesting position, because one of the last times we saw them compete was with Redwood, and that was in the last race of 2018, the 2019 preseason premiere, which was the Christmas special, where we saw Redwood win in our very first duel against one of the championship marbles from last year, Flame of the Fireballs. So that now puts a lot of pressure on his teammates, in particular this time Sequoia, because one of the rookie marbles on their team was able to defeat one of the champions from last year. And we've also seen a range of other performances, of course, from the Foresters, they got second place in the Newcomers Captain's Creed, finished in fourth place most recently in the Freefall Tournament. So, not necessarily very consistent so far. They had one spectacular moment that's putting a lot of pressure on them to continue that success. So we have a veteran and a rookie once again, Wisteria and Sequoia, and the marbles are mixed around. We are ready to begin in duel number seven. All right, we have purple and green, Wisteria and Sequoia. Who will be the winner today? We're going to find out in three, two, one, go. All right, duel number seven has begun. Forster's going to be the first ones out of the starting gate, but Ultraviolet's right on their tail. It's a close race right at the beginning. Ultraviolet's going to take it back, going to be the first ones into the second bowl, giving a few good nudges there. Their momentum stops very quickly. These actually might be our two quickest competitors running together we've seen so far. Forrester is going to get the lead back into this freefall section. Now, as I've said many times before, anything can happen on this course. These bulls are very unpredictable, and look at that! 
as I'm saying that, the Bulls are unpredictable. Ultraviolets are the very first team to reach the green. The green teleporter has been out of reach for 12 other marbles of the course of the first six duels, but with Siri of the Ultraviolets succeeds in touching it, and being the first marble we've seen. Now look at this. I have to stop talking about one thing at a time. These two are incredible. These two are incredibly fast on this, for, uh, the, on this course. Forster is taking the lead back from the yellow bull after Ultraviolets go to the green, and then Ultraviolets going over the barrier down below, over this barrier, and taking the lead back. There's so much going on here. I feel bad I can't comment on everything as it's happening. Um, <laughs> this is the quickest duel we've ever seen. We're looking on a po uh, at a possible record for these two. Ultraviolets, <laughs> look at that. Ultraviolets going to be the very first marble. <sighs> I don't believe this. I don't believe this at all. Ultraviolets land on the rung first time. Forsters are the very first team to fall back from that ladder and have to go to the anti-gravity pad again. Let's see here. What can the Foresters do? Can they do anything else that will impress us? Will they have another spectacular moment? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know if I'm going to keep this recording or not. I really don't. Ultraviolet's got a big win. They really did. <sighs> that was that was just completely crazy. Ultraviolets are a champion of duel number seven. They are the champion of duel number seven in a huge way over the Foresters. That was bizarre. I don't know what else to say. Um, let's, let's just do a quick recap, shall we? These two were the quickest out of the starting gates, quickest through the second bowl, working with one another. They switched positions twice. Ultraviolets were the very first team to hit the green teleporter and make it down to the third bowl. Foresters were quicker out of the yellow, took the lead back. On the rainbow bridges, they switched places twice, nudged Ultraviolets over this blue ramp, Caused them to take the lead. They were very quick up slalom. And on this final stretch, Ultraviolets hopped right on the ladder. Did not even land. Hopped right on the ladder. Stuck it. And then the Foresters fell all the way back down. Had to hit this again. And lost big time. Okay, I don't know what to make of that. Ultraviolets are your big winners. I'm going to watch the tapes. See if we can keep this recording. If not, it's a pity. I'll probably keep it as an outtake reel. Hopefully, if I can keep this, it's going directly to the overall standings, which basically means win or loser. Okay, well, believe it or not, I actually am going to keep this recording, and I have the perfect title for it, A Race of Firsts. And the first place finisher, Wisteria of the Ultraviolets, gets the gold and the win in duel number seven. Now, it's a race of firsts in more ways than one. In fact, there were about five or six firsts that happened here in duel number seven. Bad luck, I just have to attribute this loss to bad luck because they really did have awful luck falling all the way back down off the ladder at the end. Um, Sequoia, maybe the pressure got to him. Sequoia of the Foresters did not come away with the win today. That title goes to the veteran team of the Ultraviolets. So if you found this race fun, I certainly hope you did because it was a riot to make. This was incredible and crazy at the same time. Please leave your comments and thoughts below. If you thought that this one was very unorthodox, I agree with you because none of the other duels are like this. This has gone completely off script. But, hey, sometimes that happens. I'm going to appreciate it. And I really do love this recording, so that's why I decided to keep it. If you want to see more crazy Alchemy Marble Racing and more professional commentary, assuming in those other videos, 
please subscribe. I love when you comment. I love when you give me your input. And as always, thanks so much for watching.